Okay, so here we have a two-dimensional equilibrium problem that we're going to solve using systems of equation. It's two-dimensional and points B and E, D, C and A can all be isolated so that the forces going through those points um, meet at those points. So it's a concurrent force system. So the constraints on our problem here are that the uh, none of the wires may exceed 100 pounds and what we're, what we're looking for is the weight of the bucket. So we're going to call that W. Okay, so this will be the weight of our bucket. So I'd like to start out with a little bit of an approach here. I'm like, okay, how are we going to approach this? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to approach this by breaking each diagram into a free body, each, uh, the diagram into a bunch of small free body diagrams, find the tension in each wire, and three, compare the relationships between each of the tensions. We'll find which one is the biggest relative tension, and then we'll back substitute and solve for the weight of the bucket. So the first free body diagram we need to look at is that of the bucket. Um, later on you'll be able to probably just skip this step, but let's go ahead and do it. So here I'm showing the free body diagram of the bucket showing the weight going down and the tension force FEF going up. And if I write my equations of equilibrium, I can say the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero to the right being positive. Nothing's going left, nothing's going right, so that doesn't tell me anything. I can say the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero, up being positive. I have FEF minus the weight w, so this guy here is w, therefore w equals FEF. Again, we could probably have deduced that the weight, the tension in element FEF was going to be the weight of the bucket, but let's just be, do this for completeness. Now we can take the free body diagram at point E. So this was the free body diagram of the bucket, and here's the free body diagram at point D. Start out with point E, and I'm going to draw out the three wires that come out of point E. I have ED, I have EB, and I have EF. And I represent, represent each of those as a force vector. I'm going to assume they're all in tension. If they're in compression, I end up with opposite signs. So we have F, ED, F, EB, and F, EF, which we already know is equal to the weight. We also need the geometry, so we have 30 degrees here, and this is our good old 3, 4, 5 triangle. So now we're going to use our equations of equilibrium. Sum of the forces in the x direction equals 0 to the right being positive equals minus FEB times 3 fifths, that's the horizontal component of FEB, plus FED times the cosine of 30 degrees. Let's go ahead and solve this for FEB. So FEB is equal to 5 thirds of FED times the cosine of 30 degrees, or 1.44 FED. So this tells me that FEB is greater than FED. So when I'm solving my equations, I want to be setting at least the FEB force equal to 100, knowing that if it's 100, FED will end up being less than 100. If I sum my forces in the y direction equal 0, up being positive, I get 4 fifths of FEB plus FED times the sine of 30 minus W and that all equals 0. So I can, since I'm, I know I want to have things in terms of FEB, let's go ahead and solve this one in terms of, of FEB, plugging back in our, our value of FED up here. Up here, if we solve this the other way, we get F 
ED is equal to 0 0.6928 of FEB. So just taking 1 over 1.44. So if I go ahead and substitute that in, I get 4 fifths of FEB plus 0 0.6928 FEB sine of 30, let's bring the W to the other side, equals W, or 1.1464 FEB is equal to W. Taking the inverse of that, I get FEB equals 0 0.87230 times W. So this tells me the force in FEB Go back up here. The force in FEB is about 87% of the weight of the bucket. Does that make sense? Yeah, it seems to make sense. We're going to be sharing it between EB and ED. So let's go, let's go back down here. So I've got that relationship here. So we'll use that in the next step. Now let's go ahead and draw another free body diagram. This last free body diagram we had was at point, was at E. So we're going to do the free body diagram at B. Let's go ahead and do that. So I have FBC going off at a 30 degree angle. I have FEB down here at the 3, 4, 5. And I have F. BA going off to the left. Okay, So there's my next free body diagram. I'm going to apply the same thing. I'm going to say the sum of the forces in the x direction to the right being positive equals 0 equals minus FBA plus FBC cosine of 30 degrees plus FEB times three-fifths. Okay? So, I have another equation here. I can say the sum of the forces in the y direction have to equal zero, and there we get FBC times the sine of 30 degrees minus FEB times Four fifths, and of course that equals zero. So if I solve this one for F B C and plug it in here, I can get a relationship between F B A and F E B, and I know that F E B from over here is 87% or 0.8723 of W, so I can get a relationship between that and F B A if I need it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's Solve this one for FBC. FBC is equal to FEB times 4 fifths divided by the sine of 30 degrees. And that gives us 1.60 FEB. So I know that FBC is bigger than FEB. And we can back substitute here. We can say. Um, FBC is equal to 1.60 times 0.8723 times W, or 1.3957 W. But I can also take this and put it back into the first equation up here. And I let's take that down below here. And I can say FBA is equal to 1.60 FEB cosine of 30. So I basically just plug that in here. Plus FEB times 3 fifths. And that gives me 1.98 times F. E, B. So I know that FBA here is bigger 
than FEB, which from up above I know that's bigger than FED, and from here I know FEB is smaller than FBC, so I'll have to compare those two as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And if we solve this equation up here for FEB, FEB is equal to 0 0.625 of FBC. And if I plug that in there, I get 1.986 0 0.625 times FBC is equal to FBA is 1.241 FBC. So we can see that FBA is also bigger than FBC. It's also bigger than FBC. And so I know that the biggest number here of all the tensions is FBA. So I can go ahead and back substitute here. I can say that FBA is equal to 1.986 FEB which is equal to 1.986 times 0.8723W grabbing that value and plugging it in and I get 1.732 times W or W equals 0 0.5772 times FBA. Now my constraint was the maximum tension is FBA. We determined FBA was the biggest using these equations up here. Has to be less than or equal to 100 pounds. Therefore W has to be less than or equal to 100 pounds times 0 0.5772 is 57.72 pounds. So that's the W that will give us 100 pounds in FBA. Now we can check our work. And I'll leave that up to you. Take this W of 57.52 and plug it back in up here to FEB and into the other equations and convince yourself that FBA is indeed bigger than all the other tension forces.